Hi, people. Welcome to another week of ECCSC Live. I'm your host, Tyrone Muhammad. And as you all can see, uh, I have a man on my right here uh, who needs no introduction, the Mr. T.O. Hardiman. Uh, T.O., you got anything you want to say to the people? I'm just glad to be here on your show, brother, and I really respect and appreciate all the work you're doing in our community. Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. Thank you, brother, oh, yes. once yeah. again. But um, also, I thank you for the work right. that you do and have been doing, mm -hmm. especially in the landscape of this violence. And I most definitely want to talk about that. And uh, people, I need you all to tune in and uh, call in. That's 312-738-1060. Uh, so that's, once again, that's 312-738-1060. We're live. We're looking forward to receiving your calls. But in the meantime, uh, T.O., you had uh, March. What day was that? Oh, that was uh, Thursday, August 2nd. You know, we shut down Lakeshore Drive. Yes, sir. And it wasn't just a normal shutdown. Uh, we shut it down for some uh, particular principles. And uh, the reality is, okay, number one, there's too much violence in Chicago. Yes, sir. Number two, we need more de-escalation training with the police department. And number three, the face of violence prevention is uh, basically five people that don't really come from our community and they receive millions and millions of dollars for violence prevention, but the shootings continue to increase and the homicides. It's time to stop playing games. We need more economic development on the southwest and east side of Chicago. So we marched for multitudes of reasons. And then what was most important is that the people in the Lakeview community, Ridleyville, yes. they supported tomorrow. Right. <laughs> they supported and us. Well, and on that note, I yeah. want to talk about the march um, and, and see where, right. you know, where you think it went, mm -hmm. how, the re what was the response from what I saw. I saw a mixed review, but I saw yeah. more positive than I saw negative. Mm -hmm. It depends on where you was looking at. So what right. do you think about uh -huh. the criticism that people... Uh, Gave they entitled right. to their opinion. So right. have you have you were you able to observe any of the opinions that you would uh, like to address? Yeah, the criticism was good. I welcome criticism anytime I organize anything. I don't have to always be right. Mm -hmm. I'm a humble servant of the people, so I understand that. But I was right in this situation. Okay, the reality is that uh, when you're trying to navigate and keep a crowd of about 400 people under some type of containment and control, right. it's not easy. So I had to take over the march because I planned the march. I'm a leader. I'm a proven leader. So I'm not going to play with you whenever you come out. It's my job to keep you safe and sound. That's my job. So the criticism was welcome because people say, "Well, people just march to march." No, that's not the case. The overall goal was to redistribute the pain in Chicago to the north side mm -hmm. to allow people from uh, shutting down Lakeshore Drive for a little while, not a long time, let the people know we are tired of hurting on the south and west and east sides of Chicago. We are tired of the bleeding. And this is another thing, Tyrone. Mm -hmm. The motto in Chicago has got to change. We've had over 500, 600 homicides every year in Chicago for the last 30 years. So people out here talking all this talk about reducing gun violence, no one has been able to really get it all the way to we only have a hundred or less homicides. So let's stop playing. Yeah. It's not, in my opinion now, this is just me. I think, I believe it's incumbent upon black men to address the issues in their community first and deal with it that way. And then we kind of work other things out when it comes to make sure we get the necessary resources. For example, Arne Duncan, people need to hear this. He just received $90 million for violence prevention. From who? Uh, the federal government. Hmm. Then he received another $6 million from the Apple organization, Steve Jobs' wife. And uh, this is the point I'm making. With $90 million, I can hire every young man on the corner, <laughs> every young woman, and the people that are thinking about getting on the corner for the next 30 years. Hmm. And we can stop the killing, because I'll go out there directly to them young brothers and get them on board with me. For those who don't want to cooperate, that's another story. But I guarantee you we can reduce killing by 80 percent. I noticed when, when you was running for governor, we talked about collaborating right. and um, mm -hmm. this model of violence prevention. You know I've always been out here in these communities. And during your time of governor, I think we had stopped over 30 shooters. Yes, indeed. And um, like I say, those instances uh, 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 those situations never right. make the news until they become murders. Now right. we see all these people coming out with press conference. Mm -hmm. I think tomorrow, Danny, uh, is the Congressman Danny, Danny Davis is Davis. having a, right. a, 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 a press conference. Why is it so pressing, like, uh, to have a press constant conference right. after the murders right. when this 
when we, I think we should deal with this on the front end right. before the murder happened. But you know, I'm the president of Balance Interrupters Incorporated. I'm also an adjunct professor. But what happens is this here. Everybody's trying to make a political statement now to make themselves relevant. And uh, a lot of these people are not on the streets late at night with these young brothers. Yes, and they're not going to the belly of the beast to address these issues. You know and I know the only way you're going to stop a killing anyway is mandatory that you have a relationship with the with brothers the that's, that got their fang on the trigger. <laughs> that's right. And if you don't have that relationship, you might get shot. That's right. So a lot of people don't want to delve off into this for real because if you've never been confronted, you've never been around any gunplay, you can't stop no killing. You're lying to the people. Mm -hmm. So people out here lying, they, you know, black, black death is a hustle. Yes. It's a hustle. I'm, I, I guarantee you. Uh, look here, the police, I'm not against the police. I want to make that clear. I'm against excessive force and police brutality, but the police cannot stop the killing. That's right. And that's a deployment issue there. And see, people, when we talk like this, we intellectual thought leaders. We not no community protesters, right. no activists. Right. I'm a world leader, man, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, sure. And I'm yeah, not sure. coming from that standpoint. The reality is a deployment issue. If you know that they're killing in a certain area at a certain time, and you should deploy the uh, uh, right uh, number of officers to be there 24 hours a day in them areas. You, know, you got four communities, Inglewood, Austin, West Garfield, East Garfield, and South Shore community, right? But even in that case, you there tend to be right. yeah. too much force applied. When, when they can call T.O., they can right. call Tyrone, they right. can call other people who's out here that know the community, that know the area, even the cliques and the sets that these right. individuals involved in. So when you give all this funding towards these organizations and police department uh -huh. and none to the community grassroots leaders, right. there's an imbalance. They're not able to really fully function right. without funding. So why isn't the funding trickling down? Because I tell you, it's, it's a simple answer for me, Brother Tyrone. The funding is not trickling down because, you know, when it goes out in the world uh, view, they want to make sure no black man receives any type of momentum or credit for reducing anything in his own community. Uh, Julius Nair over in Tanzania organized 100 Warren tribes during his day and time over in Tanzania. So it can be done. We got all these cliques out here, but the black man has got to rise to the occasion once again to address the issues in his community. And, uh, and we need the resources, hypothetically speaking. If they gave me $90 million, hmm. I guarantee you, for people watching right now, I guarantee you we'll, we'll reduce killing in Chicago by 80%. That's a guarantee. We can reduce killing by uh, eighty percent for fifteen million. Yeah, well, we know that too. Based but they gave this I boy know. ninety million, so I'm just saying, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so you mentioned redistribution, redistribution right. of right. the pain yes. out north. Yes, indeed. Explain that further. Well, what basically. That you know, people that go to enjoy the Cubs game, they don't know nothing about the bleeding on the southwest and east side of Chicago. They don't have to worry about that. You see, they're going and taking all their kids to the Cubs game. You know, I wish them the best. Matter of fact, I wanted the owners of the Cubs to allow me to come in, not in, a, in an aggressive way. Let me just, uh, you know, present to the Cubs fans because I'm not against the Cubs. I was going to go and speak to them about why we were out there. Okay? So the thing, redistribute the pain for a little while so they can feel what we feel. Because people were upset. You can stop traffic. You're marching in, in the Ridleyville community. Who you think you are? Right. I'm a, yes, look, I want to also show you're everybody. From Chicago, right? That's what I'm talking about. But I also want to show everybody, Tyrone, that you had qualified black leaders that can shut some stuff down as well. Yes, sir. I want it all. See, the feedback I'm getting from the young brothers in the neighborhoods is overwhelming. Yes, sir. My man, we appreciate you. Right on. What more can we do to step up to the plate with you? Right. Okay? The other thing I would like to say to you is that. Uh, Mm -hmm. Rahm Emanuel, yeah. J.B. Prisca, Bruce Rahmer, all these individuals mm -hmm. running for office, even, even right. uh, Willie Wilson. Dr. Willie Wilson, right. I want to know, when we start talking about funding, yeah. why aren't they focused on funding those organizations? They're, they're claiming to be leaders of the city, yeah. but then they don't know Mm -hmm. how to best distribute funding that can receive the maximum result. See, what it comes down to, everybody trying to be politically correct. So you're not going to stop the killings. Stopping the killings is a nitty-gritty approach. Yeah. There's no, like, McDonald's model you can use and say, I'm going to put this same model over here and over there. That's all that university technical talk. I come from the university. I'm academic, too. I want people to know that. That's all that academic talk to make it seem like it's such a great program. Nitty-gritty work is what stops killings. 
you know, going in a basement with these young brothers, cussing them out sometimes, and then joining their world, bringing them into right. your world. The brothers know what I'm talking about. Yes. We talk in their language. No doubt. And then we bring them into our world. That's how you stop killings. Matter of fact, I had to cuss a couple of guys you got out. A call up. Oh, yeah, let's take the caller. Let's, yeah, let's call do that. Yeah. Come through. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hey, brothers, how y'all doing today? Excellent. Thanks for calling in. Hey, yeah. Hey, this is Brother Joseph. Hey, uh, really, I was just calling in, the man, to just uh, say, man, you guys are doing some great work, man. I've been checking your show out, Tyrone. Uh, man, it's a good show, but uh, for Brother T.O., man, you guys are doing some good things, and I say just continue to do that because all of those things are going to make a difference here, and um, I think that's what we need right now in Chicago. Right on. Thank you, brother. Appreciate Thank you. you. So, T.O., if you would right. like to continue. But no, yeah, back what I was saying, because I don't want nobody to take it the wrong way, because everybody trying to be so correct when they talk and all that stuff. That's why I'm grateful that God gave me the fortitude to speak truth to power. Yes, sir. The reality is it's a nitty-gritty approach. When I took them brothers in the base and they wanted to kill each other, I had to go crazy with them for a minute. And then they was able to make sense of what they was dealing with, and then they began to see the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. And then after I got them, got them to kind of calm down, and then we was able to take them to the next level. Now both of the brothers are working. One I'm working at Walmart, the other one working as a, he's in his um, truck driving school. Yes, sir. He's trying to get a CDL license. So it came from a big brother approach. Right. That's how you stop the killings, one conflict at a time. And when you're dealing with the cliques out there, it's mandatory that you have a relationship with the people in them cliques as well. And if you really want to stop the killing for it's real. Imperative. I mean, you know, it's imperative, brother. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Well, well you know, yeah. my, you heard my motto, yeah. the killings and shooting is stylish. We're yeah. dealing with a style game out yeah. there. You grow right. up shooting. Yes, These children nowadays are race shooting. They know how to shoot a gun through the video games before right. they even learn how to read a book. It's fashionable. It's fashionable. Yeah. Shooting right. is a, uh, a gun has become right. a part of your accessory. Yes, the, the extended clips and all of that. And I've always say as well that mm -hmm. Smith & Wesson is not manufactured in Inglewood. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, poppy seed, coca leaf is not manufactured in Inglewood. Yeah. And when we see these violence, this violence, it's not like right. violence is new to America. Right. Violence is quintessentially America. But you know what's scary though, and I, you know, I just say it like this: eighty-two percent of the homicides go unsolved hmm. in Chicago. So you don't know really in some situations who's killing who. <laughs> I just want that to resonate, marinate on people's minds for a minute. It's the truth that eighty-two percent. Uh, that means it's like what about a eighteen percent homicide clearance rate. This one, that's tough. This even in that, like, as far as fun. Right. Uh -huh. Once we identify the organization that's actually out here that can do effective work, mm. I'm asking you that should we should we uh, listen to to the normal um, mm -hmm. like criticism or, or normal way to to gain funding to receive funding? Well, I mean, shouldn't we have some alternative way? Should we reach out to celebrities now, the pastors, the churches? We look yeah. at, always looking for the government to right. fund us and our organization. But shouldn't we now just take different approach to receive funding? Well, we're one of the only people in the land that we don't really support one another. It's crazy. I mean, we become more consumers than producers in our own neighborhood. So when people look at us from a distance, in my opinion anyway, uh, we don't own our businesses in our community. Uh, we don't, I mean, we got a lot of issues out there. I just brought up like a little example, like the people of the Congo many, many years ago, back when the colonizers, the Belgians took yes, over sir. the Congo. How is it the Belgians had African people that, that's their country, the Congo, they was Congo yeah. people, right? Yeah. Now they working for the Belgians all of a sudden in their own country. We in the same boat in Chicago. We don't own our nail shops, our dry cleaners, the liquor stores, most of the real estate now. We don't own the real estate like we used to. So what's happening is that when people look at that, what they're saying is these people, ain't, they don't have no control of their community. So if they get killed, who really cares? Hmm. Who really cares? At the end of the day, our dollars don't turn around in our community. And it's also leading to a, a, a pretty fast death, really. Because what happens if we control our community, these young brothers can grow up seeing black businessmen in their community and business women, not just the men, and then that way they can be inspired, inspired to be the best they can be. But whenever you lose control of your youth, you got problems. And that's what's going on in the black community, in my opinion, right? And there's a lot of reasons why, though. There's a lot of reasons. So um, what, what do the meetings look like? What do uh, the uh, discussion look like moving forward as we 
deal with this violence. It's not like it's new in Chicago. Right. Every year it, we come to the same narrative when uh, it comes become right. election time or near election time. Mm -hmm. All these so-called thought leaders and activists want to get out there and talk about this violence. Right. But here it is. Children are dying in the winter too, yeah, but not just the summer. So oh, what is it? Board, what man. is it that we have to do moving forward? Well, right now, it's, we need a, what you might say a state of emergency that will not be televised. We need a state of emergency where we take it to the west side and get all them brothers together in one place with us. And do what we do, man. We got to make, we got to go real deep in their heads. We got to kind of like dig in their heads so they'll understand, man, some people out here are really concerned. This ain't no emotionalism. This is what you call manism. We got to inject some real serious manhood into these young brothers. Yes, we got to find a way to do it. Then we do the same thing on the south side and we bring them together. This cannot be televised. These brothers, see, everybody wants to get more hits here, social media, more hits there. And we turn into this I need it right now type of mindset. We got to see, if you don't eat, I don't eat. Right. That's the mindset, okay? And when the elephants fight, the grass suffer. So we got many elephants fighting all across the land. Mm -hmm. And the grass is suffering, the people say, Look, when you get kids being killed and women being killed, they just chased a female down the street on the south side last week. Four guys shot in the back, man. Wow. Come on. What, what's that all about? That's not even gang involved. That's more like... That's savagery and, right, and, right. and there's no checks and balance for that type of thing. We right. have another yes. caller. Caller, please. Thank you for calling in. Hello? Yes, hey. sir. You on? Yeah, this uh, this uh, been good to see y'all on here. This uh, Brother Earl. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, man, I like what you guys are doing. I like the things that you guys are saying. One of the issues that I, I, I've noticed... You know, I was saying what can change about the violence and things like that. Our elders have to admit that they screwed us. They have to step up to the table and actually admit that they dropped the ball and they're not doing the right things necessary to push us forward into this new generation, this uh, 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 new just thinking, how we should apply ourselves when it comes to that. I mean, I've been out with you brothers on the streets, actually, you know, community activism, doing my thing with guts. So I've actually been on the ground actually figuring a lot of this stuff out, and I have a lot of the same questions that you guys have. But I think it starts with that look in the mirror actually realize they failed us, and it's time for us to actually step into those roles and come with new thinking, new policies, and empower a lot of our youth to take control of their own lives. We're not going to get it doing the same thing we've been doing. It just ain't going to work. Earl, before you go offline, tell the people how they could contact your organization. Oh, I can be contacted directly, uh, Earl Walker, uh, give up the streets, 872-395-0704, or you can hit me up at give up the streets on Facebook. I mean, I'm, I'm in all what you brothers are doing. I'm listening to the conversation, and I know that there's a need for more men like you brothers to actually get out there and do what you guys continue to do. Hey, and you too, brother Earl. Thanks for calling in, and we'll be in touch with you soon. Uh, T.O., the ex-cons for community and social change. That whole narrative is that we, right. we destroyed the community, so it's imperative upon us who are formerly incarcerated men to set the narrative, to transform the conditions in our communities without waiting on some benevolent white man or even the major funders to help us. Right. We would like that funding, most definitely it would help us do great work, but in the, in, in the vein of what Earl's saying, we can't continue to drop the ball. We shouldn't continue to drop the ball. And in that case, I've heard you say many times, the crime change when black men decide that we no longer will allow these guys to terrorize our women and children. Well, you know, I never compare people to animals. I don't want nobody to get this twisted. But in the Lion Kingdom, when the male lion goes away, That's right. and the little lion pride, they try to the do their cubs, own thing the here, nomads. they do this over here, then the nomads try to do their thing, the women can't wait until the king come back, you know? Right. So the black king got to come back and deal with his community. I'm not saying put your foot down on the young guys, nothing like that, but there needs to be some discipline and order in our community. Yes, sir. Because the reason I say it this way, because what's going to happen, people say, well, you know, they ain't going to go for that. You don't know what they're going to go for until you actually go out there and, and, and give it your best shot. Because the reality is these young brothers are misguided out here. And they don't want to. These right. young guys, yeah. I talk to them all the time, and Earl will bear witness yeah. as well. These young men are not 
They scared and afraid. That's they the anxious. Point. They can't right. even leave the neighborhood. Right. They don't want to have to walk around with guns. Right. That's the point. I'm Self-preservation right. is everything. We right. live in a country that has more missiles than anyone. Right. And they're scared. I'm glad you said that. So people, how are you yeah. going to judge them right. for observing and watching you when we right. claim to be the peacemaker and we have more nuclear bombs and weapons than anyone? <laughs> Why judging these young men for protecting themselves and their border and their territory? I said it all the time because whenever I work with these guys with mediation, I never tell them to give their guns up. I tell them to put them up somewhere because you have to stay on security. I'm just being honest with the people because what happened, if you haven't worked with the guys on the other block and now you tell the guys on this block, it's all over, we give it up and they come and get shot. So you have to be mindful when you're working with mediation and just be straight honest with the people. Mm -hmm. Now the goal, so we won't confuse people, the goal is to get them to eventually get the guns up. That's the ultimate goal. But when you're in a war zone, you can't do that immediately. So that's why we reach these brothers because I'm not coming to preach to them. I'm telling them about self-preservation. Don't start nothing with nobody. Let me work it out over here before I tell you to get off your security. But we live that's in a important. country that promote guns. So even if yeah. it's a time of peace, they yeah. still they don't give their guns up because right. of Second Amendment right. right. We understand what that means, and we can yeah. go to that topic another day. But we yeah. do have another call online. Caller, please come through. Caller. Caller. Hello. Yes, how you doing? Good, good, thank you. So my question is this. Um, Pope, um, not the Pope, the Cardinal weighed in last week, and he said something I've heard a couple of other times, and I really wanted to get your opinion. And the opinion is that a lot of this has to do with divestment um, in black and brown communities, yes, meaning that there aren't jobs and there aren't quality education systems to prepare people for jobs. And so when you don't have those two things, this is sort of what you get. And I wanted to know if you agree with that and then who would be responsible for changing those things within our communities. Well, first, young lady, thanks for your call. And a lot of these programs out there talking about violence prevention, they really need to call themselves job programs yes. because they're not stopping no killing. Right. And the reason you really can't stop no killing is because people, you don't know when they're going to kill, number one. It only takes three or four seconds to pull the trigger. And you don't two. know the conflict exactly. that's involved. There you go. So with the cardinal weighed in, that's fine. But this investment is true. But I know some young brothers, Tyrone, people may not want to hear it. I know a lot of young brothers that do not want to work no job. That's right. And they out there in their lifestyles. So how do you deal with them, brothers? They need to work for people like me. That's right. See, I can get through to them. They can work for me. But they're not going to go work with corporate America. Right. They're not going to work in these other. Jobs. Right. That's why organizations like my organization, Boston Brothers, and your organization, we need, we're not begging nobody for nothing because right. we're doing the work anyway. I just want to anyway, make that clear. Anyway, we but, can do it more effectively. Right, if with we the resources. The funds. Right, now I go get them brothers off the corners and hire them brothers myself and the sisters. I don't want to leave the sisters out. And uh, it's, it's universal, so I appreciate the Cardinal weighing in, but the reality is you do have jobs out there. You do. The thing is, brothers got to really put themselves in position to go get them jobs. When they say the Cardinal weighing in, yeah. he just giving an opinion and a comment. But right. do he actually send his congregants right. and people out right. in the community to prevent violence? He going off the narrative that he see in the news. See, when he hear everybody was talking about, he jumping on the on the bandwagon. We talk about disinvestment. We know. Look here. Let me say this to you. Back in the late seventies, you had over nine hundred homicides a year. 5,000 shoes. Look the numbers up if you don't believe me. In the 80s, you had the same. In the 90s, the same. Homicides are way down in Chicago compared to those decades. Mm -hmm. But one is too many. Don't get me wrong. But killing black death is a hustle, my people. Mm -hmm. Everybody's benefiting off black death. The police, uh, the programs, the mental health facilities, you name it. The criminal justice system would be 70% bankrupt if it wasn't for brothers out here breaking the law. Now, it's a lot of, you know, everybody keeps talking about resources. We all need them, but the reality is we need the black man to be the black man and deal with his uh, brothers and sisters but out there. Even, <laughs> even in the black man being the black man, without being able to then right, right. remove a man from the right. negativity right. and then put him in a position to win and be successful, yeah. you re that's require funding. Yeah, you need resources without to do that. Without doing right. that, right. you know, yeah. and without providing some yeah. alternative to what he's used to, the young man, how do you correct that? Now, I agree with you on that, without a doubt, but we gotta, we gotta starve for a minute, man, until we get it right. 
Yeah. See, there's no excuse. You know, you got a lot of poor countries out there. They ain't killing each other like That's we right. killing each other in Chicago. <laughs> I mean, they're killing in Jamaica. You know, I, I got the numbers all over the world. You see, the Chinese ain't killing each other. You got billions of them living in poverty. They ain't, why? Because they, they see themselves as brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. We don't see ourselves as that. We see ourselves, you on that block, he on that block, I don't like him, I don't like them. That's how we see ourselves, you know, the young brothers. Mm -hmm. And we got to help them elevate their thinking, brother. I think the enlightenment is that, um, what the sister posed, is the fact that we can't expect benevolent white folks, politicians, church leaders, mm -hmm. political, pol I mean, you know, right. leaders, to bail us out of this. They're yes, not. It's they're been not going on forever. Too long time. So we do have to take over the stores and businesses in right. our community. That's we have to not. teach them young men mm -hmm. how to become business owners in that community. Right. We have, in our neighborhood, we have Mexicans are the next ones to come and then set up shop in our community. We had every people come in to suck our blood and our resources and our wealth in our communities, from the, from the Jews to the Koreans yeah. to the Arabs, and next is what? The Mexicans. Yeah, then the Martians. Then the <laughs> <laughs> so so at space. some point, brother, we do have to step up and be right. men. Right. Not only save our sons, our women and children, but right. also feed our sons. Feed our women and children milk, bread, proper yeah. eggs. Got to do it. Everyone else, how can you be a man and you can't even feed your child? That's very true, brother. That's very true. You know, I was born and raised in the heart of ghetto. I understand that. So, so before we you know. before we go, yeah. tell the people about your organization mm -hmm. and and what how they can get in contact with you. Yeah, my website is uh, violenceinterrupters.org, and you can reach me. My email is t i o underscore h at yahoo.com and you can reach out to me on my website or my email and I would love to have a conversation with everybody but I really salute you and what you're doing sure. because you know you took care of your business man you have your 501c3 you're representing the people sincerely and you need support so that's why I'm on your show today because right. we must find a way to reduce the homicides in Chicago by 80 percent uh, Tyrone, because yes, billions of dollars have been spent over the last 20 or 30 years in law enforcement and with programming. Why is it that we still have not achieved that goal? Yeah. That is totally unacceptable. So what I'm saying is let's change the model. You know, I don't have a problem Try even something training. Different. Try something Try different. Try something different. Right. My thing is if I identify, yes. and I personally identify at least 10 grassroots organizations right. that I know deserve funding, but unfortunately they... It's not coming that you way. You get the funding, It's right. never enough to really do anything they need to do. Um, I want to say this. I thank you all for tuning in. I thank you all for every week. Uh, those You know who you are for being consistent in your call in. I, I didn't hear from you this week, Ray, and we're looking to hear from you next week. But in the end, um, I'm just going to throw it out there. If you're running for office, political office, whether it be governorship or mayorship, and you see this violence problem going on, I tell you, bring the right people in the room. Bring the right people, those young men that's sitting at the, on the street corners. They'll tell you what's wrong with them. Bring them in and let them be a part of the discussion. Uh, education should be a major component in uh, teaching the man the knowledge of self. But a different type of education, right. a different brand of education that encourage them and build self-esteem, that build morale, yeah. that uh, a form of manhood training of sort, that but, teach respect and honor, you know, for, a brotherhood. For, for your brotherhood, I mean, as a, as a brotherhood, as a unit. So I thank you all for tuning in, and I ask that you uh, continue to support ECCSC and um, our live and spread the word and let's get involved. Uh, no, more, no more should we sit on the, on the background and on the couch. Let's get out there. Let our, let our actions and activity be as poignant as our voice and our opinion. Thank you for tuning in. Hope to see you uh, next week at the same time. Peace.